As a listener of Optimal Living Daily, I know you enjoy insightful information and ideas, which is why I know you'll like a podcast called Something You Should Know with Mike Carruthers. Every episode features the world's leading experts on a wide range of topics that really affect your life, like how your brain predicts your reality, or the one thing that's better than happiness. It's always fascinating, fun, and will leave you just a little smarter. So search for Something You Should Know where you get your podcasts, and when you see the bright yellow light bulb, follow and start listening. It's a Minimalist Monday edition of Optimal Living Daily, episode 2859, The Art of Less. How Minimal Living Inspires Creativity by Rachel Jones of NourishingMinimalism.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, your narrator. And I'm gonna keep today's intro nice and minimal as we optimize your life. The Art of Less, How Minimal Living Inspires Creativity by Rachel Jones of NourishingMinimalism.com. I love to draw and paint. And practice makes perfect, right? I know it's true, the more I paint, the better I am. But the most interesting thing I found is that the more I limited myself in specific ways, the better I became. I found this a few years ago when I was on a kick of publishing coloring books. I'd color with my children, but when I went for the coloring books geared for adults, they were so detailed and intricate, I couldn't color with the colored pencils I got to share with the kids. I got frustrated with how much time it took to complete a page, and I set out to change that. From everything I'd read about coloring books, they said to pick one topic and focus on it. The first one I did was wine. I did about 20 images, and then it was hard. The last five pictures were the hardest to come up with, but they were the ones I was most proud of. A few months later, I had made a couple of other books, and the wine one was so popular, but after drawing three other books, I knew I could make a better wine book. This time was even more challenging. I'd already used up all my ideas in the first one. I didn't want to repeat anything. I scoured Pinterest for inspiration. I borrowed a hand lettering book and a monogram book from a friend. It stretched me like never before. And I loved the results. The same thing happened with every book I created. Not only did my drawings improve because of regular practice, but my creativity also flourished with the limitations of only coffee, only animals, only crunchy words. Minimalism has been the same. When you don't want much visual clutter, it takes creativity to add life and warmth to a room. For me, decorating has been trial and error. I learned that natural things like wood and plants instantly warm up a space and make it feel comfortable. I've learned that textures add a cozy feeling and mismatched furnishings make it feel down to earth instead of staged and stuffy. A mix of old and new makes the room feel comfortable and homey. A contrast of colors is aesthetically pleasing and hanging pictures at eye level gives a feeling of connectedness and order. But minimalism doesn't just stretch your creativity in decor. When you limit what is taking up space on your calendar, you'll find yourself with a whole bunch of free time. It also means that you're not mindlessly filling your days with things that other people ask you to do, PTA, committees, or fundraising. Now, if you love those things and choose to spend your time that way, then that's perfect. Minimalism will free you up to do that without it being an extreme drain on your energy and emotion. But if you don't want to do those things, what will you do with your spare time? When you're not spending hours picking up and cleaning the house, what muse will come? Minimalism frees you up to do the things you've always dreamed of. Will you travel, sew, knit, read more, write a book, start a business, play games with your children, learn to cook, take classes, paint? When you take up a new hobby as a minimalist, you won't want to go, hopefully, purchase everything imaginable for that project. Instead, keep in mind that out of limitations comes creativity. What will you paint with the primary colors? What kind of business will you start that doesn't require you to store inventory? What places will you visit that fit within your budget? What is the first topic of the first book you will write? Accepting yourself, your abilities, and your desires lead to a more meaningful life. Living a life of minimalism is like stripping away all the things that have kept you covered and hidden away. Letting go of all the excess that has surrounded you gives you the opportunity to deal with yourself, your longings, 
and everything deep inside you. Because I was searching for more in-depth relationships, I thought if I simplified my life, I'd automatically grow closer to those around me. Although it gave me more opportunity to develop a healthy relationship with them, it didn't happen only because I had the time. I had to take intentional action to follow through with what I ultimately wanted. I had to make myself sit down with the kids and read. I had to schedule time with my older kids and dates with my husband. And I had to take time to pray and be available when God put a need before me. Minimalism, whether you want to or not, brings you face to face with the true you, which is why it's such a wonderful starting point. No matter what you want out of life, you have to acknowledge this real person that has been hidden before you can move towards the things you desire. You just listened to the post titled, The Art of Less, How Minimal Living Inspires Creativity by Rachel Jones of nourishingminimalism.com. Between the kids being home and hosting, everything in our house gets used up in summer. With Instacart, I can save money by stocking up on all my favorite summer brands. I save time by getting everything delivered in as fast as an hour. And I save myself a sink full of dirty dishes by stocking up on paper plates for the annual summer cookout. Save more on summer essentials? Spend more time enjoying summer. Add summer to cart. Download the app to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum $10 per order. Additional terms apply. Major phone carriers make you sign contracts with rigid data plans to trap you into a kind of forced phonogamy. Sounds pretty insecure if you ask me. At Consumer Cellular, we believe in a more consensual and healthy form of phonogamy, free of contracts and more flexible to your data needs. This way, you stick around not because we force you to with contracts and fees, but because you love our phone plans. Like ardently love our phone plans. Phonogamously. Consumer Cellular. When Freedom calls, we're here to answer. Call us at 1-888-FREEDOM. Thank you to Rachel. Another interesting take on minimalism and its benefits. I can't remember if I've heard this idea of limitations adding creativity specifically, but I can definitely see that happening in my own life too. This podcast is a pretty good example of that. Not many people have been listening since episode one, but if you're one of those few, definitely let me know. But anyway, when I started recording in the first couple of months, I was narrating articles from minimalist authors and personal development authors like I am now, but also covering the topics of health and fitness, relationships, even personal finance. After a few months, that's when we decided to narrow it down and move the other topics to their own shows, and it really opened up opportunities for each. It's interesting how that worked out. But even outside of work, just like Rachel mentioned, I think it happens in day-to-day life too. That minimalism leads to, well, whatever you think brings the most value to your life. It's up to you to figure out what that is. So thank you to Rachel for this one. Thank you for being here. Have a great day whenever and wherever you're listening to this. And I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.